Now at five, we've just learned what led to police shooting a suspect at the end of a chase in Oregon City. A big project years in the making is coming to fruition. Find out the new way kids and families can learn about the stars. And it's Sunday, May 9th. Happy Mother's Day. On this day in 1988, then presidential candidate Jesse Jackson attended the graduation of his sons, Jesse Jr. and Jonathan, as they graduated from North Carolina A&T University. The news starts right now. We begin with new developments in a police shooting in Oregon City last night. The Clackamas County District Attorney now says the suspect shot at sheriff's deputies several times before they fired back, hitting him in the shoulder. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Pat Doris. That chase went along Highway 213 and ended in Oregon City just before 7 o'clock Saturday evening. Audio from police radio traffic helps fill in some of the details of what happened. The OC unit got hit with the spikes or something. Gets an ambulance to Redland and 213. Now number two now. 13. I need. Hey, shots fired! Shots fired! Shots fired! Shots fired! Four David, four zero. Good four. Because we're going to three. Medical Redland 213 now. 49 six. They have shots fired on that too. Do we know their current location? Nazi's left arm. We've been told an Oregon City officer you heard there was involved in laying out a spike strip to stop the driver and was injured. He had some sort of object hit his eye. He went through surgery and we're told is back home recovering tonight. Officers were then involved in that shooting at the end of the chase. The DA said the suspect is named Gerald Leroy Barnes II. He was treated and released for the shoulder wound. Now faces several charges, including attempted aggravated murder. Happening right now, the Multnomah County Sheriff's Office is asking for your help to find a missing hiker on the Horsetail Falls Trail. It's about two miles east of Multnomah Falls in the Columbia Gorge. Deputies were called to the area after 71-year-old Joe Dean sent a message to his wife saying he was lost somewhere on the difficult Rock of Ages Trail that connects to Horsetail Falls. Several search volunteers combed the area last night by walking the trails and using drones above, but Dean has not been found yet. So if you were in the gorge hiking and you should think about whether you saw him, he's six foot two, about 160 pounds, was last seen wearing a blue long sleeve shirt, black and yellow jacket, olive green shorts, gray hiking boots, a navy face mask and carrying a blue backpack. If you do think you may have seen him, you're asked to call the Multnomah County Sheriff's Office. Well, if you love looking at the stars, you might be following the story of a couple in Yamhill County who have a giant blue telescope. It was stolen and then returned a few months ago. Now they hope to build a multi-million dollar observatory. Galen Etlin explains. Forrest Babcock has his own mini observatory in rural Yamhill County with telescopes he has worked on for almost 50 years. The light comes in, bounces off the main mirror up to a secondary. He knows all about the technology and space. You know, the thing about science is that it's like magic, only it's real. He and his wife, Janet Zelke, have traveled the county with this 15-foot, 800-pound telescope called Big Blue. They bring it to wineries, empty lots, and schools, giving people a window to worlds beyond. This is the design for the new Carleton Observatory. Now their bigger dream of a science center, years in the making, is coming together. It finally feels like there's no turning back. This is going to happen. They're collaborating with the Evergreen Space Museum in McMinnville, home of the Spruce Goose. They've secured land next door for a new $10 million building. Planetarium, an observatory, a lecture hall, a beautiful stargazing plaza. No pun intended, but all the stars aligned. Steve Scott is interim director at Evergreen. What spoke to you about the Carleton Observatory? Their passion is contagious, and their passion is going to get this thing done. The project is ambitious, but backed by big names. Evergreen was recently yeah. bought by the Stoller family behind Oregon's famous wine, and Dangermond Keen Architecture in Portland designed the observatory concept pro bono. Their specialty is designing science centers. Linfield College is also donating telescopes from its former astronomy department. One is from 1888 found tucked away in storage for decades. That's it, wild. That's it, like finding it, treasure. It is. 
it is like it is like a national treasure. It's a local treasure for sure. The best planetary imaging that you can get. I, I'm really excited about how that's going to look. The big project will take a couple years of fundraising and grant writing, then another year of construction. Create something that not only serves Yamhill County, but will serve the entire region. And by this June, Janet and Forrest plan to set up a workshop exhibit inside the Evergreen Space Museum for people to watch their work on telescopes and to get a preview of what's to come. What about space is special to people? What speaks to you about this? It can spark such imagination and creativity and wonder and romance. Add in some inspiration. What else could be greater than that? And sky's the limit. Galen Etlin. KGW News. Thanks, Galen. And now we turn to the pandemic. Oregon's reporting 610 new and presumptive cases of COVID across the state today and two new deaths. The number of people hospitalized, though, has gone down by 11 from yesterday. It's now 318. On the vaccine front, 1,448,000 Oregonians are fully vaccinated tonight. Another 520,000 have their first dose. On this Mother's Day, the tradition of taking mom out to eat is a little harder to accomplish because of COVID restrictions. But as our Tim Gordon found out, even with limited capacity indoors, restaurants are definitely making the best of it. It's a great day to be in the restaurant business is not a phrase we've heard a lot during the pandemic. But Mother's Day is a pretty great day. At Ovation in downtown Milwaukee, sidewalk seating is full up. Owner Sean Sexton opened Ovation Bistro just about 14 months ago. We actually started this whole thing uh, during the pandemic, and uh, that had influenced us to really make the outside very nice. It's fantastic. This is actually one of our favorite locations to visit in downtown Milwaukee. We don't live terribly far away, and it's just great that they're open, and I'm thrilled to see the, the attendance here today, so it's wonderful. Josie McGinley is being celebrated as a mom by her son Jacob and husband Joe. Inside, the kitchen is cooking at full speed. The dining room, however, is not the busy spot this Mother's Day. This larger party represents the 25% indoor limit for the majority of counties in Oregon, all at one table. Oh, it feels great. It's fantastic. We got a reservation, and yeah, we're the only ones inside. So, yeah, feel special. Meanwhile, up in Vancouver, there's no outside seating at breakfast at Valerie's, but there are people waiting to get in. How's your Mother's Day? Going. Very busy. Valerie McCoy can serve a lot more people inside thanks to the space and Washington State's more generous 50% capacity restriction. It takes us out of the negative, so we're actually able to make a profit. Last year at 50% we couldn't. Um, it was a little tighter, but we are able to now and things are going much better. And Mother's Day diners like the Williams are glad she's open. You know, obviously with social distancing in place and, and other things to consider, uh, they do a good job of making sure everyone gets in and out and you have great time and good food, so uh, it's pretty good. At another booth, Fatima Velasa agrees. I think they have it spread out very well, very well organized. I think it's great. And so does husband Richard, yes. despite yes. the Mother's Day timing. We don't ever really wait that long for breakfast, and this is the longest I've ever waited, but it was really good, and my wife deserves all the credit. And back in Milwaukee, Sean Sexton is glad Ovation is catching on as a great place to eat out outdoors. So 25% indoors isn't affecting me that much because it's a, a relatively nice day and a lot of people are more comfortable to be outside. Tim Gordon, KGW News.